What's going on everybody? Dato Doi here with a long-awaited match analysis video. I promised more would come after the open beta and I'm here to make good on that promise. So with that said, let's talk about the player we'll be watching today. Because this footage is taken from the replay mode, I don't know the other player's name, but I do know the blue cell we're watching today is Tatsunako. If you've seen my other analysis videos, chances are you know this guy's name. He's proven himself to be a very talented Dragon Ball Fighters player, so I would strongly recommend you guys go follow him on his Twitter page. The link to do so can be found in the description. So since this takes place in the open beta, we're going to be looking for a little more optimization in terms of combos. We're also going to be looking to see what they're doing on defense, and we're going to be looking at how solid these players' fundamentals are overall. But like last time, let's begin by discussing their character choices. I want to keep this part of the video brief, so we'll just talk about Cell for now. So why did both of these players choose to lead with Cell? Well, the answer to that is actually pretty simple. Cell has all of the traits of an excellent point character, aka leading character. These traits include him being able to do a lot of work with not a lot of meter, and he also does an excellent job at making use of his assist. You'll see in just a bit of how easy it is for Cell to set up Vegeta for a good assist combo. So when you're building your own team come January 26, remember to keep those traits in mind. When looking for a character that leads off your team, you want somebody that makes good use out of your assist and is able to do so without much meter. Let's take a look at an example during this match. Tatsunoko has been able to put his opponent in the corner, but makes a mistake when he vanishes. Now that Red Cell has the advantage, he's able to put the pressure on and call in Goku's assist. Once the Goku assist hit, Red Cell is able to perform a pretty standard combo and call in Vegeta's assist and continue the combo even further. With Tatsu still in the corner, Red Cell still has the advantage. And thanks to a good overhead, he's once again able to repeat the same process over again, resulting in Tatsunoko's Cell almost being completely taken out. And while all this is taking place, Red Cell is also building bar for his teammates. Compare his four bars to Tatsunoko's two. Luckily, Tatsunoko is able to switch into his Nappa here, and there's a couple of things that happen in rapid succession that I want you to pay attention to. At first, it appears that Tatsunoko's Nappa is going to get Cell into the corner, but thanks to a well-timed reflect, he's able to push Nappa all the way back to mid-screen. Red Cell then performs a vanish and ends up right next to Nappa. This is where you can see Tatsunoko's fundamentals really at play. He starts throwing out crouching light jabs in order to see if his opponent lets down his defense. It might not seem like a lot, but these light jabs are very hard to punish, and if one had hit, he would have been able to go into a full combo. We can see this happen only a few moments later when Tatsunoko again throws out a couple of light jabs, sees them connects, and then transitions into a full combo. From here, it was just a matter of playing the neutral correctly and landing another hit, and Tatsunoko is able to take out Red Cell altogether and swing the game back into his favor. Now we're going to skip ahead a bit in the match and see that Tatsunoko's Nappa has taken a couple hits from this enemy Vegeta. After Vegeta knocks him down though, he goes underneath Nappa and Tatsunoko decides to call in Vegeta in order to correct himself and get some damage off. After Vegeta's called in, he performs a very standard combo ending in a knockdown, opts to go for the vanish, into his Key Blast move, and then he performs the Big Bang attack. Overall a very good combo considering the situation he was in. A little bit later in the match, we can see Tatsunoko perform a combo with Vegeta that involves using his dropkick to get down to the ground fast enough to catch the opponent during a hard knockdown, use a special, and then DHC into Cell. After that, it was just a couple more hits and the enemy Vegeta was taken out as well. Now something you'll notice in the rest of this gameplay is that now that his only character is Goku, he's still not using these seven bars for some reason. And I think that's going to be one of the main things that cost him this match in the end. You don't really ever want to sit on seven bars. You want to use those in your combos throughout the game to maximize your damage. So I'll skip ahead here because it's going to come down to Tatsunoko just landing a couple more hits and then a very nice vanish combo from Vegeta and he's going to convert that into big damage. And now that he's in the corner, another combo pretty much seals the deal and Tatsunoko comes out ahead in this match. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy these more analytical videos as they're some of my favorite to produce. I hope you guys enjoy these more analytical videos as they're some of my favorite to make and I will be making more in the future. If there's anything you guys saw in this gameplay that you think I missed, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the videos I put out. I'm Dato Doya, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.